Hi, I'm Tom Lydon, editor of ETF Trends here in Chicago at the Morningstar ETF Conference, and I'm here with Jeremy Schwartz, director of research at Wisdom Tree. Jeremy, great seeing you. Thanks for having me on, Tom. Yeah, you've just completed a panel, and you talked about dividend strategies. Share with us some of the things that came up because that was a very well attended event. Yeah, we've been Wisdom Tree's been in the dividend space for, for almost nine years now. We launched our funds in 2006 with a family of 20 dividend weighted strategies. And the idea was at the time, maybe there's 300 ETFs, 300 billion in assets. Now you see 16, 1700 ETFs. But the central premise was everything was market cap weighted. We're gonna have a dividend based process to rebalance on value, sell when things are getting more expensive, buy when things are getting cheaper, and do this systematically every year, sort of relative value discipline. You know, we've, we've branched out from just value-seeking strategies to now having a sort of forward-looking growth strategy called quality dividend growth, which is sort of the latest factor within Smart Beta and this factor approach is how can you identify companies that are going to grow their dividends going forward. And so that's sort of one of the new strategies that we're, we're sort of very excited about. So growing their dividends going forward, but also the quality factor. Yeah. And as you talk about global markets, we've had a lot of volatility. We've had a lot of opportunity yeah. because things have sold off but it's tough for the average investor and the average advisor to go in and have the guts to do a, a little bit of uh, shopping at these levels, but sure. this ETF does it for you. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about, you know, long-term research says value's been one of the big factors that explain yeah. long-term returns, and people say value's got this value premium over time that sort of pays to take value exposure. Well, this is, the quality factor, interestingly, also shows long-term excess returns, high returns over 30, 40, 50 years of research. But interestingly, it's described as negative value, so it's anti-value. So how can you have better returns while still being anti-value and value them so well? So people talk about marrying the two together. So we have value strategies with these quality factors, and they can perform different in each market environment. I think now, interestingly, you had this global search for yield where everybody's been hiding out in telecom, utilities, REITs, these high dividend stocks recently. This quality dividend growth strategy is saying is actually relatively cheap compared to its values, the traditional value stocks today. But also, you know, eventually one of the things causing the volatility has been is the Fed going to normalize interest rates. If you do ever get rising rates, this quality part of the market is really, I think, where you want to be positioned. And so it's really, I think it's, it's a timely product today based on the current valuations as well as the current interest rate environment. So to some degree, what you're saying is if you're looking for yield still, you may have to look outside of the fixed income market, number, number yeah. one, right? And then the other thing, make a quick comment about this. There's some areas of the world that are known for if they have cash on hand, they pay out in the yeah. form of dividends where maybe some areas of the market here, we don't do that. The U.S. is one of the lower payout ratio countries. You think about the U.S., we only pay out 30, 35% of our earnings as dividends. Overseas, it could be 50, 60% or higher in a lot of the developed international markets. Uh, so we think this, this, this quality dividend growth factor, we have applied regionally across the world. So we have U.S. large and small cap versions, but we also have emerging markets, global ex-U.S., uh, international hedge, cur currency hedge version of it. Uh, so we think it, it, that's sort of been the most popular one. If we look at IHDGs, that currency hedge international, uh, as a way to get quality dividend growth, but also take the currency risk out of the equation. So I think that's sort of a very interesting one to look at right now. So to a great degree, your recommendation is, hey, get paid for waiting for a global recovery, especially in some of these areas where the valuations are so favorable. Yeah, we think this has a long-term approach, so quality is a long-term factor that's done very well over time, but short-term, given the market environment, where you think about historically low interest rates, thinking about all the short-term volatility that you talked about, yeah. having this quality focus tends to do well in this volatile type market, so I think there's the long-term, but the short-term reasons also that these funds are in focus. Great, Jeremy. As always, I just enjoy seeing you. I learn something every time. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Thank you.